Well, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Wherever you're watching us from, this is Y254 TV, your number one youth station. And of course, we are continuing with this morning uh, program right here on Y in the morning. If you're just joining us, my name is Ram Aguko, and this is uh, the Strength of a Woman segment. We want to talk about what makes women stand out. Of course, we feature different women, uh, different ladies, for that matter, on different uh, uh, days. Today, we want to talk about uh, how can you create opportunities for yourself and others? What can make you stand out as a lady? And do you need a, a job? Or do you need to get employed for you to succeed in life? Well, today let's talk about this right here. And of course, I am with Joanne Noah. She is a young em employer and entrepreneur. Kabisana Joanne. Thank you so much, Ram. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. good. For somebody who's meeting you for the first time, mm -hmm. um, tell us something a bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh, uh, my name is Joanne Noah. Uh, I go by John now on all my social media pages. Mm -hmm. I am an entrepreneur. I deal in interior decoration. I offer both products and services. Mm -hmm. I also deal in Mtumba clothing. That was my first, first, uh, mm. that was like my first, first job. Mm -hmm. I began this when I was in college because mm -hmm. I, I could pay fee for myself. So I could go to class and then after class rush to Gikomba get a dress or two, come back, sell it at 300, get a profit of 100 shillings. And then the next day when people are going to rave and do everything, I would still be at Gikomba mm. and then back. So that is how I began. Wow. Yeah. From that intro, you know very well that this is some, someone that you really want to listen to. And of course, we are broadcasting live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. And of course, streaming live through our website www.kbc.co.ke forward slash y254 so that you can be able to follow this show on the go from wherever you are. My handle is at Ram Maguko, which is where you can be able to find me. Head over to our Facebook page where we have posted the question of the day and tell us where you're watching us from as you give us your thoughts in regards to this and matters concerning strength of a woman. Joanne, let's take it back a few years. Form four, mm -hmm. you said, or was it high school? I mean, um, I mean uh, campus, yeah. after campus. Yeah. You're saying that you had your first job, yeah, and it flopped. Mm -hmm. That was after which? After was it? form four. Form four. Yes, I what had happened? my first job even before I got my results. So I was, uh, I was teaching. I was a teacher, uh, and uh, paid by BOG. Mm -hmm. So I got to a school, it's in the village. My village is a village. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's, it, was like a, it was like a rehabilitation center. So where we have ladies who had gone to, who had given birth mm -hmm. before they finished their high school. Mm -hmm. So everyone was there. So funnily enough, in Form 3, I was the youngest. I was the youngest among the students. Okay. As a teacher, okay. I was just 17. Mm -hmm. Most of my students were 20, 23, 24. So, so you, you're teaching, you, 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 you've uh, you finished home for the age of 17? Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. So you finished home for the, at the age of 17, uh -huh. you volunteer to be a teacher somewhere. Mm -hmm. And those who you teach are 23? Yes. What? And there was, there was one lady, there's a day she was not, how could she get anything class? So there's a day I called her and she was like, Madam, hmm, you know, if my firstborn were alive, she would have been your age mate. And I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So I was being paid 3,500 Kenyan shillings. I was the only lady teacher in that school. So I was the boarding mistress. I was taking care of these ladies. I was taking care of these women, and I was also finding myself as a teenager. So things were, things were hard. I had to grow up so quickly and grow up for their sake and also for my sake because I also needed this money. I needed funds to get to college and maybe support my mom, and, you see? So wow. I had to be there. I had to grow up. I had to act like someone who had gone to a teacher's training college or someone who had gone to campus. 
So you, I worked, I was working like every time I was not sleeping, but I was earning 3,500 shillings. Per month? Per month. Wow. For how long did you do that? I did that for the whole of 2013. Yeah, the whole of 2013 for a year. For a whole year? Mm-hmm. 3,000 shillings per month? 3,000 shillings per month. What? <laughs> and, and, and what kept you going for a whole year? Why did you keep on <laughs> doing that for one full well, year? It was, a, it was a passion. You know, after Form 4, there's nothing much you can do. In mm. the village, there's nothing much you can do. I had not come yeah. to Nairobi. To mm Likuja, -hmm. Nairobi, in a trans line. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> I had not come to Nairobi. Uh. So I was I was also dreaming about Nairobi and like, oh one day I'll go there. The city of opportunities. Yeah, the city of opportunities. I was like, one day I will have to go there. So I had to be there for these ladies. It was a girls' school. They really loved me, they took me as their sister, but deep down it was it was not. It was not easy. But, but so, so you're saying they they loved you, uh, your fellow um, workers or the students no, because the there's some. Uh, you're saying that they looked down on you. No, they did not look down on me as mm. such. Mm. But they loved me as a. So let me say some loved me as their daughters. <laughs> some loved me as their sisters. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it took a toll of me. Yeah. Did it push uh, you to, 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 to add something that uh, uh, created this better version of yourself? Oh, yeah, it did. It wow. did. Mm. It did. Must have been a very interesting experience it there. It did. Do you look back on that time and say, wow, uh, I don't regret this or I regret this? Mm, in a way, I don't regret that. Because if I had not gone through that experience, mm. maybe today I would be in someone else's office earning maybe 15,000 or 10,000 or 20,000 mm. and I would be comfortable. So that really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Wow. And, and of course, even as we engage with, uh, <coughs> with Joanne, uh, I would like you to, enga to, to, to uh, engage with us on this. I'm sure you already love her story. And we're going to hear more about how she even got into the uh, Mtumba business, paying for her, your own school fees. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I wonder how that's possible. Yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mtumba, paying for your own school fees. Uh, if someone wants to get a hold of you during this discussion, uh, uh, where, what are your social media handles? Joanne Noah, my business page is for Mtumba. It's Dress Me Pretty Collection. And for the curtain business and interior, it's my happy place interiors. Mm -hmm. Yes. And your personal handle? Joanne Noah. Joanne Noah. Joanne Noah. Yes. Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Yes. Wonderful. Tag her. Talk to her. Reach her out. And of course, my handle is at Ram Maguko and the station handle Y254 Channel. Joanne. Yes. Let's fast forward now. How was, it, how was life now after, after high school moving to... To, to campus and then uh, uh, ending up in the Mutumba business? So things happened. After, 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 after my job, now I had to come to Nairobi for mm. the first time and shock. Shock on you? Shock on me. Mm -hmm. So I got, to come, I, got, I got to college. When I got to college, I, I had someone who could pay for my fee. So at that time, nilikuwa nimekuwa sana na my relatives. So that was my... Yeah, no, from. just my relatives and my sister who was staying in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So character development. Hmm? So mm -hmm. I can say that is what led me now to who I am today. So you meet someone and they're like, no, we will pay. I will pay for your school fee because I was supposed to go to study at uh, Kampala International University international relations mm. and i was like no i cannot do a long distance relationship you just come to a cheaper college here i will pay and he gave me money for the whole semester and for my hostel so i was like yeah this is a good deal so my my sister and my parents are like no you really have to go pursue international relationship at in, uh, kampala international uh, university i was like no 
life already is tough here mm. in Nairobi. How about mm. in another country with a half scholarship? So I was like, no, I'm going for love and I'm going for the better option. Mm -hmm. So after a few, uh, just before I could do my first exams, we broke up. So when we broke up, I was on my own. Remember, I'm not talking to any of my, any of my relatives. I'm not getting any support from them. So from there, I had to learn what Nairobi entails. Now, this is after you opted out of uh, uh, to, uh, to going for Kampala. Yes, I'm now in uh, NIBS, Nairobi, Inter so Nairobi Institute of Business Studies. So you, and did you go and do international relations there? I don't know if they, if they no, offered there. No, I was doing business management. Business, yeah? Business, yes, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is when I had to learn what Nairobi entails. I normally tell people there are five places that a youth should not know, should not fail to know in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So that is Gikomba, uh, there's Uhuru Market, there is uh, Kamkunji, there is Dubois or Dubois, and then there is Isili. <laughs> if you don't know those five places, where were you, Bado? If you don't know, that, that is why Bado una, Unateseka. If you don't know those five places, those are places you can go there and work without capital. Trust me, Ram. Mention those places again. Nataka uchukwe kalamu na karatasi na kutoka leo utembe utafute huko ni wapi. Because una teseka, uh, uh, Joan, umezema, they are suffering because they don't know these five places. Yes, yes. Number one. Gikomba. Gikomba. For all your mutumba and shoes. Mutumba clothes and shoes. Gikomba. Uhuru market. Mm. For all uniforms in Kenya. Mm. They are made there. Dubois. For any, any lady who walks around Nairobi has something from Dubois. Yes, you're Du Bois. Any lady who works in Nairobi has something from Du Bois. From all cosmetics and all accessories are there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's Kamkunji. All plastics are there. And then uh, there's Isili. Every lady, every lady who is wearing a trending outfit, it's either it's either fake or original. <laughs> uh -huh. So. 100% fakes are in Isili, but they are so close to the original and no one will. Hakuna mtota kusimamisha kwa, let me look at this label, is it original or fake? Mm. So Isili has a lot of opportunities. It has curtains, it has carpets, it has ladies' clothes, it has men's clothes, it has men's suits, it has shoes, it has almost everything. And then there's another one for guys who want to do electronics, Hapa to uh, Luthuli Avenue. So those are places, those are five or six places that a youth should not fail to know in Nairobi. Mm. Because when I was starting my interior deco business, it's now bigger than the Mutumba one. After Corona, I had to close my shop because guys were like, ah, Ngozime toka China zikona Corona. So I had to close my shop. I had just moved to a bigger house. I had my two sisters and my cousin in the house. And then I had to close my shop. I took all my dummies and my mtumbas and put them in my bedroom. So I started doing online. Wait, 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 wait. You've, you've moved faster than I thought. F wait. Let's take a step back, Joanne. You, 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 you uh, started um, going to NIMS. Yes. Correct. Yes. And you started, you, you now lost your connection with your, with your, with your family mm -hmm. and your friends, mm -hmm. now they're no longer paying your school fees. Mm -hmm. What happened then? Because now I, I'm seeing you uh, talking about Gikomba and, 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 and the interior deco. What happened after not getting school what fees What happened paid? after not getting school fees? And it's not that my, my family was struggling. Mm. I come from, a, do I say humble or poor? <laughs> Just say humble. <laughs> Let me just say humble. <laughs> so I had to I had to prove to my family that I can do this. Mm -hmm. I do not want to leave school. I do I did not want to be a dropout. Yeah. So, so I love dressing. So when I could go to class, be like, I love your dress. So like, mm, okay, you love my dress. Okay. And this dress I bought it at a hundred shillings. Mm. So how much could I could even sell my dresses? If I had to sell it to you, ah, 150, 200, I was like, hmm, okay. <laughs> so I went to Gikomba. Mm. 
my first first time I went to there's a lady alikuwa nafungua bell now we have the camera zile now the top ones the mm. top notch the ones you want to have so I was there I was at buying those clothes and then I happened to ask this lady in bell gani umefungwa at that time I'm asking about I'm asking about the bell and I cannot even afford the camera ones Mm. The camera dresses were now from 500 to 1000. Hapa ni kona 600 and I have come for four dresses. Mm. He told me, hey, madam, kama hauna pesa, songa. So I moved to the next one. Naona vile wanafungwa, I was like, well, one day I will have to be there and I'll be the one choosing the best dresses. So nilianda, I, I could go to where they sell them at 50 shillings, at 100. I select, naenda nayo shule. I show my friends during break time and they could buy. Pole pole tu, pole pole tu. Kidogo, if I get, if I sell like 2,000, I could even go to car wash. Hmm. Nime wash agari vizuri. You I, wash vehicles? Yes, I have done salon work. So, any break time I could get, it's either niko kwenyele ya mtu. Hmm. Um, I'm hawking clothes. Hmm. Or I'm selling earrings and makeup stuff from Dubois. So that is when I was in college. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated, I, I now had my first physical shop. So when you're in college, so you, you managed to pay your school fees through this? Yes. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so when I graduated, I, b even before I graduated, I, I already had my physical shop. I already moved to a, a, better, a, better, a better house mm -hmm. than the one I was when mm -hmm. I was in college. And during my graduation, my, my mom came, my relatives came, and all was well. So I was still continuing with my, with my clothing business. And then character development happened, and I lost, I lost like 50,000 Kenyan shillings in Gikomba. So at that time... That were, were you con drama? Yeah. How many stories have you seen? In Gikomba, a lot happens. A lot happens. Unafika tu uko unashitukia hauna pesa. Yeah. So, such happened. And then I, I, just, I just had to come back. I, I have this spirit of resilience. Mm. I never give up. You never give up? I never give up. I never stopped praying. I never stopped going to church. So, those are some of the things that keep me going. Even now, things are not easy with the current Kenyan economy. Things are not easy. But the, if you know what you want, and if you know what you don't want, actually, if you know what you don't want, you will keep on going. So how did you get into the business of interior deco? I got into the business of interior deco during Corona. Remember, I had not closed my shop, and mm. I had everything back in my house, and I had uh, three people in my house, now we were four, and Corona is here. W but they came to your house, but... No, I normally stay with my, my sisters, my younger siblings. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So, and then I had my cousin there. So, at this point, I had to think fast. The first thought I had was selling Omena and Mboga Yekinyeji, which I did for like two months. Mm -hmm. So, that, that paid my rent for that time, Omena and Mboga Yekinyeji. Wow. And then I decided, why can't I just furnish this house and make it look beautiful? Mm -hmm. So I went to Isili and walked around and bought, actually bought the cheapest curtains, and I put them there. So I started taking pictures, I started taking pictures, taking pictures, and the guys were like, oh, I love your house, who did your interior? I was like, hmm, okay. Okay, business yeah. opportunity there. This is a business opportunity. <laughs> I love I that. love your curtains. Uh -huh. I was like, hmm, okay. So you're posting those pictures on... Uh, on Facebook, on my status, on Instagram. People were like, wow, I love your curtain. I love your house. Who did the interior? I was like, hmm, okay. Then I opened a page. The Nika name of the page? My Happy Place Interiors. Mm -hmm. I opened a page. It was, it's free. It's free. Opening a page on social media is totally free. So I did that, and then I went to the guy who, uh, who supplied me with these curtains mm. and the fundi who made these curtains for me. And then I was like, I want to do this. And the fundi was like, okay, just get pictures. And then I went to social media on people's pages and I took pictures, the pictures of things that I, I normally see. Mm. So my interior decor business, I began with absolutely no capital. 
no capital. <laughs> so what I would do, what? You wa this is what you want, yes. Mm. So you have to pay a down payment of 60%. And then in Taenda, I'll get the material, I'll get them shonad, and then I will deliver them to you, and then you pay me my 40%. So that is what I still do up to now. So, <coughs> so it just started like a joke. Yeah. You posted a picture of your house. Yeah. Someone likes it. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, if you'd like this, give me a down payment of this uh, yeah. price. Yeah. And the, this can be your own design. Mm -hmm. So do you have fundies that you work with? Though? Yeah, I have, a, I have a fundie on my payroll now. So now you're creating employment for other people now? Yeah. For how many businesses now? For how many? Uh, two, just the two. Two, yeah. one? The, my, my happy place interiors for the interior deco, mm -hmm. and then the other one dress me pretty collection for the mtumba. Wow. Yeah. So um, when you look at these two businesses so far, I'm trying to consider COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, how, 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 how was it trying to get back on your feet after COVID? Uh, when, when COVID, uh, immediately when COVID came, it was tough. But when COVID was ending, I was already into the interior business mm -hmm. and it was purely online. At that time, it, I did not have a physical shop. It was purely online. Mm -hmm. So what I could do is market, 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 market. Mm -hmm. I could mm -hmm. market and then no, it got to a point when I had sold to all my friends. All my friends who needed curtains had curtains, who needed carpets had carpets. So I had to think again, what else can I do besides selling curtains and carpets? Now I got into corporate, corporates, doing uh, office blinds, doing office carpets, mm. doing paintings, doing wallpapers. So the only, uh, the only uh, what everyone should know, just know where to get what. So, so know where the materials are from. Yes, mtu akikuliza, do you do this? Oh, yes. So, apo you sometimes don't you don't no. no, you don't say no. In Nairobi you don't say no to a business opportunity where you have to supply raw materials. You don't say no. Don't say no. Don't say no. But it is not if you know mind. those five places, mm. don't say no. If you go to a school and you can supply uniforms, go to Uhuru market get those uniforms. If you Get a tender of supplying electronics. Go to Luthuli Avenue, get electronics. I love what you're saying. You're saying in Nairobi, <laughs> you don't no, say no. You don't say no. Actually, at some point, my first corporate job, that was my biggest, biggest job mm -hmm. I've ever done. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Money was already in my account. <laughs> how, did you, how did you manage to get all these different clients for these different jobs? Referrals. 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 That's why I make a lot of noise on social media. I make like uh, legal noise and good noise. So <laughs> that's why from there, when you, when you keep people updated, mm. they know. Anytime they think of, anytime to a male is, do you know someone who can do this? Oh, there's a lady. There's a lady. There's a lady. So through referrals, that is how I get my clients. You must have been good. You know, with your mouth, you know, with, with, with your language, for, for them even to ref, refer yeah, you to. Yeah, you get to our office, we, the, the board members are there, so tell us how are you going to make this place look more beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you have everything, you have slides, you, but you have no idea. From there, when money is in your account, utaenda gikomba, utafuta fundi anafanyanga hivi. It's like, oh yeah, kuna moja hapa. So... But the only thing that helped me, as I said, mm. knowing these five places in Nairobi. Mm. Yeah. Knowing these five places. Yes. But, but, but then I'm asking Joanne, there must have been those silly mistakes you've, you, you must have made. Oh, or yeah. a, a, a time where you, you, you cut yourself short or something. There are so mm. many. There are so many. I have been robbed at gunpoint. What? Yeah, robbed? Rob robbed at gunpoint from Isili. At that time, I had, a, I had an order worth 100,000. That was my first order for curtains for a bigger house. 
I had an order worth 100,000. And at that time, you're like, let me save. So I took a matatu, and then I bought seats. Tunanunua viti uko nyuma, and then you put your stuff. Iso curtains? Iso curtains, carpets, wallpapers. Those things are expensive. Curtains are not cheap. Curtains can cost you up to a million for a, good, a bigger house, a good house. So it's like these robbers know. When they see you shopping, when they see you packing your things, they know what you're carrying and they know the value. So when we got there, I was not the only one who was robbed. We were robbed, several of us. So there's like, Madam to a pesa, I was like, pesa yangu yote, iko kwa gunia na iko nyuma ya gari. So they're like, what do you have? I have curtains there, I have carpets there, I have wallpapers there. What is their worth? It can be around 80 to 100,000. So they're like, okay, send to pay simu. So at that time I had a jumpsuit. Well, it's a royalty. And then the, the passengers. From, from, from your body? Yes, you yes, yes. And then they took, I, I was only left with one shoe. Nikachua survey. So it was around Sambilia usi kusasa. I mean, survey. I had my phone. Nilikuwa nimeficha simu chini ya kiti. Then I was like, ata simu nimefunga uko, you, you'll get everything there. So when I was left at survey, I was hopeless. Remember, this is a client's order and you already paid everything. So part of the profit peer, maybe umesha tumia, you have paid your rent or you have paid something else. So I, I took a, a niliomba lift mbaka gidurai. I stay in Kasharani. Iliomba lived in Baka Gidure and then I called my cousin to come and pick me. So that was one. Another so, one? Wait, 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 wait. Um, didn't this client feel like you caught them? No, no. You uh, told they, them that you're robbed? They understood. But they knew you're robbed? They knew I was robbed. But I had to. They gave me time to do the work. So you had to look for money to do yeah, that work yeah again. so anytime i could get an order all the proceeds would go to that client's order so nilianza nadirisha moja i did the next one nikamaliza living room then i went to the dining pole pole too i did it until i was done so it also depends with how you relate with your clients trust yes it also depends with how you relate with your clients. Very, very important. All right. So that was one instance. That was one instance. Uh -huh. The next one, uh, no, that was the last one I was taking a matatu when I was doing serious business. Upper to Gikomba, I was like, yeah, no, I want to, I want to boost my mtumba business. Mm. And then I was dragged. Nikajikuta kamkunji, nikona matope. I'm in a very big jacket because we go there very early in the morning. So nimeenda uko five, nimefanya shopping. Like Umeenda gikomba, nimeenda ukajipata gikomba. kamukunji. Nikajipata kamukunji, nikisha maliza shopping and everything, adi kupiga pasi. So the mkokoteni guy who was taking me to Amatatu mm. disappeared with everything. And that is so, so common in Nairobi and gikomba. So is the mkokoteni guy that drugged you? Yeah. So I'm gaining consciousness as, at, at three Three in the evening. Nilitoka gikomba satano. Three in the evening. When I, when I go for stock, I normally alert my clients. I tell them, hey, we have a new stock today. Kindly pass by the shop. You see if you could find something nice. Mm. So my clients were there because they always went. Wakwe wakwanza were waiting. They were waiting at the shop. And this is 11 a.m.? This is 11 a.m. Nakuja na jujua at three. Sina fair, sina anything. And all this time, you're just lying on the road. Maybe people thought maybe Mimi ni chokora or something. Because the way we dress going to Gikomba, it's not seen by Lisana na chokora. You have the boots there and zikona matope. And then you have a jacket. Umeva kamavin. So someone thought that we ni chokora to amelala. Ah, tu hapo tu. So Did you have your specs? Then. No, no, at that time I do not have, I do not have my specs. <laughs> <laughs> so, my nika, nika tembea, nika enda kwa makanga, waizo magariza gidurai, nika wambia, brate, mimi sinafea, nataka kufika gidurai. Nika wambia mieta, nita kusaidia kusimama hapa, tuchukue fea. And she was like, hey, madam, uko sawa. Nika wambia, nimeibiwa kila kitu, uh, 
yeah so niko hivi nataka unishukishe tu hapo car wash nitavuka next time i meet you i will pay you double aka nikaingia tu so at that time i was like i was like an object so ikafika time gari ikaswe hivi kwa barabara guys were noisy i was like nini mnapigia kelele mimi hata my life is ending why can't we just have an accident and die i was nilikuwa nimesha then my mom was like si urudi tu nyumbani i'm like urudi nyumbani ushago ushago and remember i told you our village is a village hata hatuna barabara ya tamak hmm so it's like nirudi ushago we don't even have water we don't even have electricity so that is when we say you left home to change home and you have to do all it takes to make sure you don't go back and join those people get them mm. out of that place because you are at the back of your head you you, you, you know where you are coming from you yeah. know the, you, you know your background you know giving up is no you cannot even think of giving up una give up unaenda wapi una aje sasa aje <laughs> so again i bounced back and then bouncing back and then corona comes and you're like wow hmm, okay we are still not going home come what on. may we are still not going home we are not having premature marriages i'm not moving into a guy's house i will make it did that come in your mind at some point <laughs> guys are like you know there are some people you interact with the like ah why can't you just move in like, move in how how do i move in i love who did someone propose to you so oh. no no okay some I, I, I don't think i have friends who can tell me <laughs> 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 yeah. but i have guys who could tell me so just come i will take care of you and that is a mistake most ladies do because you don't have money and and you believe he mm -hmm. will take care of you yeah and you believe he will take care of you just come i will take care of you <laughs> just come mm -mm. don't don't ladies munasuke manano Don't. Don't never be at the mercy of somebody. Mm. Because if they get you there haukuwa na kitu. Ni mimi nilikuja nikakusaidia. So what do you don't even have a voice? And you get there you start having babies and the first baby two years backwards now. Two years nyuma inakurudisha two years nyuma. Because you now have to take care of the baby and at some point now you have to take care of your husband. Now you have two babies in the house. So, ah, jikaze tu. I know it's hard, but jikaze tu. Jikaze tu. Yeah, jikaze tu. John, John, what are some of those memorable milestones? Those memorable moments that you've had during this whole period? We uh as at now I can say I have I have grown. I'm still growing. I have mm. not reached where my goals. Mm. I have not gotten even close to my goals, but mm. I have grown. and i'm still growing my first house nyumba yangu ya kwanza ilikuwa 1500 zile za mabati you know mabati alafu mlango ni, ni mbao so instead of mtu kugonga mbao anafanya tu it's it's louder than the door so and then zile unazimiwa stima during the day and then ju stima is on the landlord Hmm. and then usiku ndio mnarudishi wa stima ukijaribu kupika hivi na coil unaangusha land mzima because d d during the day I, yeah during the day there is no electricity yes uh, the land la 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 stima mm -hmm. so stima inaweka only during the night yeah. but, 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 but you, you managed to get to a better house i managed to get to a better house because now, now i'm looking to take care of my two i'm taking care of, i've been taking care of my two younger siblings the mm -hmm. ladies moja and I graduate the this month wow congratulations and then there's another one ako first year ako eldoret technical mm -hmm. so at least i am always there for them they don't have to think of mtatoa wapi pesa ya hi all my studying life have been frustrated with school fee so that is something i always try as much as possible not to frustrate any of my sibling 
Are you the eldest? In, in, uh, I'm the fifth born. We are seven. You're seven? Yes. <laughs> I'm the fifth well. born. We are seven. Mm. You're a strong lady. So, there's, there's no option. As a lady, there's no, if, if you are privileged to be in Nairobi, there are so, so many opportunities in Nairobi. I want us to bring this discussion to a close now, Joanne. Mm. And I want you to talk to your fellow sisters watching you today. Mm. All right? And uh, give us a parting shot, your final words. Talk with them. That's your camera there. So, to any lady watching this today, there are times you can look good and people will even question if, if, you, if that is the real you. So when those times come, look good. But you have to make sure you are finding this looking good. If you know these five places in Nairobi, please take a walk and know where you can go when things go bad. Employment is good. You can always sustain it to the side hustle. There's this, most of these businesses you can start with as low as 2000 with as low as 5000 The amount that you have, the, uh, what determines your, your success is how far you want to go, mm. and uh, how do you interact with people. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joanne. Mm. Uh, once again, how can someone find you on social media platforms? Joanne Noah. Mm. Joanne, N-O-U-A-H. That is Noah. Uh, my business pages are Dress Me Pretty Collection and My Happy Place Interiors. We, my Happy Place Interiors deal with uh, all kind of interior decor and services. We offer curtains and carpets, wallpapers, paintings, uh, wall hangings. At Dress Me Pretty Collection, we deal with all ladies' clothes and children's clothes. Wow. Yes. Joanne, I wish you the best. Thank you Keep so doing much, what you're yeah. doing. You're a strong lady. You've inspired me personally. Thank uh, you. I love, I, lo I love your story. And of course, that is the story of Joanne. I hope you've been inspired. That's the strength of a woman. All right. My name is Ram Maguko. We still have more coming up your way. Keep it right in the morning.